Hi everyone, my name is Ryan Cook with Sunny's Car Wash Chemistry by Diamond Shine. You all know that chemistry, good chemistry, is a key ingredient to getting a clean, dry, shiny car. Every day at Sunny's, we're making thousands of gallons of car wash chemistry and shipping it to car washes all around the world. Formulating car wash chemistry is truly our only focus in Mineral, Ohio. We don't make dishwashing soap, bath soap, or any other kinds of soap. We make the world's finest car wash chemistry. Join me as we go on a tour of Sunny's The Soap Factory. To start the tour, please meet Janet Morris, our VP of Operations. Hi, Janet. Hi, Ryan. Janet, tell us a little bit of what's happening here at the chemistry plant. Well, let's take a look. We opened the Menor factory back in June of 2022. We currently have 200 people working on the Diamond Shine team, with 40 working at the factory each day. This includes chemists, chemical engineers, and field reps. The factory itself is 109,000 square feet. Each year, we can produce up to 12 million gallons of soap. That's about 50,000 gallons a day, compared to 2 million gallons a year that we could produce in the old facility. The combination of everything you are about to see lets us make large-scale quality chemistry, package it, and get it out to trucks quickly. Thanks, Janet. How many months has it taken to bring this, this project to reality? It's been just over two years. Oh, that's great. I mean, it's an awesome amount of work you guys have done. The plant's beautiful. I'm looking forward to showing the team everything you guys have done here. Next, let's go over and meet Megan Wren, our research and development chemist. Let's head over there right now. We're here in the, in the lab with Megan Wren. She's our research and development chemist. Been with us for about three and a half years. And Megan, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do in the lab here? Okay, so here I come up with all of our new products as well as testing different materials that we may want to use in our old products or coming up with improvements. And a lot of what you guys do in the lab too is doing the quality control stuff like testing retains. Can you talk about that a little bit? So for quality control, we test all of the bulk chemical deliveries coming in to make sure they're within spec. That's important because we're putting it into our big tanks. And then we also test the finished goods too, right? To make sure they're in spec? We do, yes. We test um, all the products that we make out on the floor it comes in and we test for various um, specs so we test for specific gravity pH the acid and base levels and um, sometimes viscosity which are all important so we're not only just checking testing the stuff that's coming in the raws that are coming in to make sure they're right but then we also make sure once we make it that into a wonderful car wash product we test that to make sure it's it's perfect for our clients, right? Yes, we have to make sure that everything's going out uh, the same as it was before and keeping that consistency going. So I know one of the other big big aspects of your job is, and you talked about in the beginning, was doing, uh, doing some of the research and development, creating new products for us. And So is one of your hobbies still uh, making soap at home? Yes. So no matter what, you're always making soap. And I think that's, I think that's you know, Megan's obviously very, very passionate about making, making chemistry. I know that when we've, we've brought other projects to you in the past, we've asked you to do, you know, make a new formula and a lot of times you come back then, you know, within a day or two with a couple hundred formulas. And then that's when the real work starts, right? Trying to figure out which one works. Yeah, so in research and development, usually it's, it's creating several dozen formulas and then you pare it down until you get the final product that you're really proud of and that you want to send out um, as, a, as a new product and innovation special people like Megan that make a huge difference for us and our clients and it's what makes Sunny's great. Hey guys, we're here in the water treatment area with Clayton. Clayton does our safety and compliance. He's our safety and compliance coordinator. And this is actually one of the more important parts of our, of our plant because it is the base of all of our chemistry. So quality water, making sure we have the right kinds of water, but also how we dispose of the water and making sure we do that in a, an environmentally sound way is critical to being able to scale and take care of our customers for years to come. Clayton, why don't you tell us a little bit about this area? So just like in a car wash here at Sunny's Chemistry, uh, as Ryan mentioned, we understand the importance of using quality water in our finished product. Uh, so right behind me here are our hot water tanks. Uh, we have one for soft water, one for hard water, and a third one that's actually capable of being switched to either one. We use a softening system with salt crystals, uh, as well as a reverse osmosis filtration system uh, to ensure that by the time the water makes it into our mixed tanks that it is of the highest quality. Over here to my right, we have our wastewater area. And all processed water that comes from the plant uh, travels through an oil water separator. Uh, up into our holding tanks where we treat it and make sure it's within 
the city guidelines and limits before we send it out, making sure that we're always conscious of what we're releasing and that it's environmentally safe. One of the things I think is pretty cool about the, the, uh, the softeners and the RO systems, that they're actually made by a sister company, Velocity. So Velocity actually made all of our water treatment and stuff, which is actually pretty cool. We were able to keep that in the family. And then these hot water tanks behind us, that maybe are the biggest I've seen in a long time. So it's pretty yeah. massive. And it, we use the hard water mostly for the clean out process, right? That's correct, yes. Yeah. And it just because it's a little bit easier to do the clean out, just like when you wash your hands, if you have soft water, it's hard to get the soap off. With the, uh, the hard water, we're just able to rinse that equipment off a little bit quicker, right? That's correct, yep. And then on the, the treatment before we go to the city, Really what, what they're doing there is like pH, that kind of stuff, making sure it's within it's within spec before we release it to the sewer. Correct. And it does go to the sanitary sewer. Yes. Thanks, Clayton. Appreciate you walking us through the water treatment. Up next, we're gonna take you guys over to the mixing station. Hey guys, we're here at the mixing area and I'm excited to show you this. We've got three great team members with us. RJ's been with us for five years, Q for three. They're both chemical technicians. They help make the wonderful products we deliver to our clients. And standing to the my left here is Bill. He's our production planner. Bill, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do? I'm kind of the in-between between the floor and the office. I uh, keep the inventory straight between uh, the raw chemicals and uh, the office. Customer service asks for the orders and I get those out. You know, it's one of the cool things about the company is we continue to grow. We have to keep up with our customers' demands and, and uh, it creates roles like what we created for Bill here because we need that sophistication. We need somebody actually staying on top of what needs to be produced and when. Can't do it the way we used to. So it's, it's something I'm very proud of that we continue to grow and create opportunities for folks like you. And obviously, congratulations on the promotion. Thank you. Q, why don't you tell us a little bit about the mixing back here? Oh yeah, this is the mixing area. Right now we have 12 tanks open that we can make a mix in, ranging from the size of 10,000 gallons to 2,800 gallons. We have now, what, 12 bulk tanks. So we can easily just add a but add a chemical by pressing a button. It's made our life so much easier. A mix that would take us four hours to make in Wycliffe now takes us about an hour and a half, two hours. That's pretty amazing. So it's a lot faster. We got the load cells that are making sure that everything's put in exactly right. Yep, we do everything off of weight. And like you said, we got the 12, we got the 12 bulk tanks. So when you need to pull something from there, you literally just queue it in the computer. Yep. QQ, that's kind of a funny little thing there, right? <laughs> so, and then it just starts bringing it right in, right? Yes, sir. Press on the button. How do we do the small ads? The small ads, we have a weight, we have weight scales here. So we'll put a pallet up there and then we'll just zero it out and suck whatever chemicals we need out of there that way. And it just pumps straight from here up to the top, pumps right? From here to the top of the tank, yep. And then from here, we actually go to filling the product, which is actually where we're going next, the drum filling station with Tony. We're here with uh, Tony Keller. Hey, he's our production supervisor and we're at the drum filling station. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this, Tony? Uh, these drum fillers here are our semi-automatic drum fillers. They're the newest of the drum fillers. What they do, they automatically will advance once the technician puts the pallet. He will put, uh, with the 15s, he puts on nine 15s on. It'll advance to the uh, scale, which is directly behind us. Uh, the lance will automatically be, it's programmed by the computer to fill to that set weight. So with the filling of the, the drums with the weights, we always go at least, we never underfill a drum, so we always wanna be at least at 2% of the, the drum that actually uh, hitting our weight. Uh, if it's over 2%, then at least we know our customer is getting the weight that they're supposed to get in each and every drum. Our customers are always just getting a little bit more yeah. than what they're paying for. So we set our tolerances to where worst case scenario, they get the benefit of the doubt. Absolutely. Perfect. So we want to make sure that every customer is taken care of in that retrospect. And with these new machines, with these new drum fillers, they're automatically programmed in order to go from one drum to the other drum uh, by a photo eye. And what the photo eye does, it actually looks for the darkest part of the drum, which is actually going to be the hole that the drum, that the lance is going to go down into. So the infrared, so you'll see the red light come on, it finds the infrared, uh, the dark hole goes down, it hits that weight, that 2% comes up, and it moves to the next drum. So it does that the nine times and then automatically rolls off of that drum filler scale and goes to the takeoff process. And with the takeoff process, then we tighten down our bungs with our torque wrench, goes to 20 PSI, which is DOT standard. Uh, then the safety cap is put on with a crimp uh, capper. Uh, from there, the material handler takes it right off, takes it to the shrink wrapper and ends up back in the warehouse. Sounds like you've been doing this for a while. Just so, a little bit. So, the, uh, so compare this to the old system back in the old plant, you know, and, right. and the efficiencies of it. 
Uh, the efficiency is, uh, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, the idea is, is our old style, which was kind of like the bicycle style where you had to take it from one, uh, one drum to the next drum and wait for that. We've increased that by, the old efficiency was 11 minutes a drum, or, or a pallet I should say, down to six, sometimes five. So the increase of that, and it also alleviates having two production uh, team members running one drum filler, we only need one. Because while that's automatically filling, we could be labeling, we could be pre-stacking and uh, preparing for the next run. So super accurate, super, yeah. super efficient. Yes. So it sounds like we can make a whole lot more soap. A lot more bubbles. Take care of a whole lot more customers. Absolutely. That's awesome. Hey, we're up top in the mixing area. We're here with Riley, a chemical engineer, which is a job that didn't exist for us a year ago. So I'm, I'm pretty excited with the new plant build and all of our growth. They were able to have some talented folks like Riley on board. You've been with us about a year, right? Yes. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about this area, Riley? So up top in the mixing area, um, above each pair of tanks, we have what we call a tree. Uh, these trees come from the chemical bulk tanks um, and each pair gets all 12 of these chemicals. Uh, in the center shaft is our processed water um, and then at the bottom they go into those pairs of tanks. The water supply here is quite faster than what it used to be. Uh, we can actually fill a tank usually for a mix in about 10 minutes. And then we also have clean in place lines in each of the tanks so after they're mixed uh, they can get sprayed down and get ready for the next mix. It was pretty awesome. One of the things we did in the past was uh, we'd actually fill the tanks with water overnight because the water lines in the old factory were so slow. So the fact that we could just do it almost instantaneously now gives us huge capacity to expand, right? And then we've got some, speaking about expanding, we have some opportunities to expand here too, right? Correct. We have uh, two more spaces for bulk tanks and those trees also account for that. And then we also, at the end of this, uh, this run up here, we have we have room for some more mixed tanks, right? Six more mixed tanks. Six more mixed tanks. So as we continue to grow to meet our customers' demand, this plant can continue to grow with it. It's pretty exciting. So up next, we're gonna head down to the maintenance and bulk storage area and uh, look forward to seeing you guys there. We're in the bulk storage area and maintenance area with Dwayne. Dwayne's our maintenance crew. Been with us for six years. Actually was over at the old plant and came over to the new plant now. And so one of the big changes is these bulk tanks, right? So our bulk tanks are get, we uh, bring in container trucks um, of material um, daily uh, to fill our bulk tanks. And as orders needed, we just keep bringing in more uh, chemicals and we just go from there. So this used to be a pretty labor intensive process. You know, our raw material trucks would show up. We'd have to put a forklift in there and take it all out. You know, it just, it was tremendous, took a tremendous amount of manpower and storage. Now a tanker truck basically looks like a gasoline truck pulls up hooked to the back of the building and it yep. pulls it right into those tanks, right? Everything is usually by uh, gallons now instead of by drums. And you know, we, we're getting bigger. Growing and, like uh, crazy? Growing like crazy. That's what we're supposed to do. So when that, that tank hooks up, there's a manifold back there, which I think we're hopefully get a chance to show you guys. Yes. But we just hook it up, right tank, right? We have a manifold room that will unload our bulk tanks through uh, stainless steel piping that we have installed in the ceiling for our uh, holding tanks. One of the things this really has allowed us to do is as we continue to expand, it allows us to buy more efficiently. We're able to save quite a bit of money. And obviously it's driving, a, you know, that just ultimately drives faster, drives a better value for our clients. Same quality product. So it makes a big difference. Thanks, Dwayne. Up next, we're going to head over to the label area and meet Mary and have her walk us through that section. All right, here we are in the label area with Mary, and uh, Mary is like uh, one of the last folks to come over. She was in exile over there in Wycliffe for a while because we had all the, uh, you were the last employee there for a long time, right? <laughs> so the labeling equipment was one of the last things we moved over, but uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the labeling area and, and what you do for us? Okay, um, we do all the labels in house here. Um, so if there's a problem or if we run over in a mix, we can make them right away. If there's a problem in shipping where a label gets damaged, we can replace it. So there's some things about our labels. They're all OHA, o, or, or GHS and OSHA compliant, Yeah. right? And then we're getting ready to go so, to some new labels that are gonna be full color. So we're ordering some bigger printers. And, and then obviously this is an example of our old label. It's a solid color. And uh, there's really no difference between uh, this and let's say like this is actually a pre-soak. There's no difference between this and one of our waxes. The new labels are gonna be a better material, so they're more water resistant. So if there's spills, that kind of stuff, they're gonna retain all their information. But additionally, they're gonna be color coded. So you can tell a pre-soak from a wax or a pre-soak from a or tire dressing. So it's gonna make a big difference for us. And I think that, you know, there's obviously 
just another way that we're trying to stay on top and be the very finest at what we do. Up next, we're headed to the shipping area. All right, we're here in the shipping area at Kai, and Kai is our warehouse supervisor. He's been here eight years, and what he just told me is eight years in one week, because I think he's, he, yeah, be, yeah. he beat me by a week. Oh, yeah. And uh, so we both started about the same time. Kai, why don't you tell me a little bit about these flow racks? So one bank can hold 10 pallets deep, so it'd be 30 pallets just alone right here for one truckload. 300 pallets, the whole flow rack can hold. So about 10 truckloads? Yep, 10 truckloads. And then why are they numbered? Because the guys in the morning, I'll give them a list to what bay to put it in. So I know when a truck show up, it's in 10. So the guys loading the trucks know what bay to go to. So if like number 10 is George's, that's, that's a, uh, George's entire truck load is right there. Yep. Loaded from this end. Yep. Then they pick it up from the other end and put it on the truck. Yep, same thing. That's amazingly smooth. That's and so this is one of the big changes from before, right? That we'd have stuff all over the floor. Yep. Call it like forklift ballet. Yeah. It was crazy watching it back in the day. Yeah. So it's a lot smoother now, a lot right? Smoother. A lot smoother. All right, guys, we're gonna head over to the bullseye line next. Hey guys, we're in one of the most exciting parts of the plant, the automated bullseye line. And joining me are Matt. He's our director of operations, been with us about three years, and Adam's been with us about a year and he's our automation engineer. Matt came on board right about the time we went from being a small company to becoming a big company. And why don't you tell us a little bit about that experience? Yeah, it's been like a growth like I've never seen. Uh, you know, within six months of me being with the company, COVID hit, so we were juggling growing the business at an unreal clip and trying to keep the doors open. Uh, we, we pushed our old plant to the max, hence why we're standing in the new $20 million facility. So Adam, why don't you tell us a little bit about what's going on here with all this great equipment? Yeah, so this automated bullseye line will uh, pump out these two and a half gallon containers. Um, each filler does 12 bottles a minute, which at the end of the uh, both lines running efficiently will pump out six, or I'm sorry, one pallet every six minutes. One of the robots does slip sheet inserts. One of the robots does um, bottle packaging, so it places the bottles into the boxes. And the last robot is a pallet sizing robot, so it'll pick up three boxes and place them on a pallet three rows high. So how does this uh, differ from what we were doing before? Like how much more efficient is this? And Yeah, so uh, how we're doing it before is the operator would load um, empty containers on onto the line manually. Uh, they would operate a forehead filler, and then as they got filled, they would apply the caps themselves manually torque them down with a, uh, a drill, basically, and send them off down the line where someone would place them into boxes and then hand palletize every single box. Yeah, we went from eight fill heads in Wycliffe to 12 here. With the automation, it's about six times more efficient than what we had in Wycliffe. So six times faster, it's easier on the employees. We think it's gonna drive a ton of efficiency. In fact, one of the things we're excited about is that we think this is gonna help us make this actually one of the most economical ways to purchase chemicals from us is to go ahead and buy bullseye. So we're really pretty excited about this and it's a lot easier on our employees. A, a lot easier on our employees. On top of that, the, uh, one of the machines actually builds the boxes for us. That takes the whole man out of the operation completely. And because we have two lines, that's equating to two people. So it's, this has been, uh, this is actually one of the biggest investments we made in the plant. You can see it's gonna have a huge impact on our business and we're pretty darn excited that you guys got to see it. All right, guys, we're here in the customer experience area of the company and, and here with Lexi. Lexi's actually been with us now. How long have you been with Sunny's? Sunny's about six years now. About six years. And you're the customer experience manager. I am. Can you tell us a little bit about the customer service you know, area in our company and what you guys do? Yes. So customer service up here, we work on entering all the customer's orders fast, efficiently, and quickly. We get it out to the warehouse for packing, working on any questions customers might have on stock, pallet sizes, and then we coordinate with our trucks to get them out the door quickly. And then we communicate all the BOLs and tracking information back to our customers the same day. So this is something that was a lot, you know, you go back just a few years ago, we might ship a truck or two a day. Mm -hmm. And obviously it's gotten a lot more complex because we're shipping quite a few more trucks, right? Yeah, about eight to 10 sometimes. So it's just gotten a lot more complex. Your team's quite a bit bigger, right? Three people, something we used to have one person do. Yes. So again, as the company grows, we continue to, to grow as well to meet our customers' demand, make sure we have the right people and resources. Yes. So, okay, I got one more question for you. Okay. What is it that you love about customer experience? My favorite thing about customer service, I don't want them to worry, we have them covered. So I think it's, you know, that's another thing that's obviously near and dear to Sonny's is always putting the customer first, always taking care of the customer. 
But it's also, you know, the way you take care of customers is taking care of the people. And obviously you do a good job of that too. So Lexi's a great member of the team. And obviously, you know, big, big key portion to making sure we get stuff out the door quickly. All right, thanks Lexi, appreciate no all the hard work. Hey, thanks everybody for joining me on the factory tour of Sunny's Car Wash Chemistry. You know, you can see that we took a lot of effort to drive efficiency, automation, really make a world-class facility here. But I hope you also took away that we have some fantastic people working for us, big part of the Sunny's family. They work hard every day to make a big difference. You know, from signage to equipment to parts, chemistry. This is what we do to make car washing easy.